Welcome to The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. I am not Trevor Noah. I am Jordan Klepper. Our guest tonight from the hit Netflix show, Marvel's Luke Cage, Mike Coulter, is here, everybody. Yes. Very exciting. So, obviously, I'm subbing in for Trevor, who, unfortunately, is out sick this evening. Not from watching too much debate last night, but instead, apparently, one of his dimples exploded. <laughs> Doctors say he will make a full and very handsome recovery. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, Trevor, if you're watching, I will treat your desk and your show with the utmost respect and dignity so that everything's in good shape when you come back from what you're actually suffering from, which is your heroic battle with penis farting syndrome. <laughs> uh, guys, please, I know it sounds funny, but penis farting is anything but. It's a very real disease where, surprisingly, your penis farts. <laughs> it's no laughing matter. It's stage four, penis farting. <laughs> which is what Trevor Noah has. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of a white guy trying to fill a black man's job, let's talk about <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> yes. Now, last night he debated Hillary Clinton for the third and final time, and the stakes were very high for the tangerine snatch grabber. In the last few weeks, he's plummeted in the polls. He's lost endorsements from Republican leaders, and now when he shouts, here, boy, Chris Christie hardly ever comes. <laughs> the point is, Trump needed this debate to turn things around. He had to appear presidential, dignified, unflappable, prepared, and respectful toward women. Let's see how he did. John Podesta said some horrible things about you, and boy, was he right. Well, let me translate that if I can, Chris, because... Um, you can't. The fact that no the puppet. States, no puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's Wrong. A very, Give me and a on the day, what we want to do is to replenish the Social Such a Security nasty Trust woman. Fund. Wow. Is it just me, or did that guy nail it? <laughs> Actually, you know what really bothered me about the whole nasty woman comment? The way Trump said it as if he expects us all to agree with him. It's like when you're in a taxi and the driver tells you a disgusting and racist joke and you expects you to just laugh along and you're like, dude, that's inappropriate. <laughs> I wrote that joke, you're telling it wrong. <laughs> but let's turn to last night's biggest moment when Donald Trump told democracy, it's not me, it's you. Debate night stunner. Donald Trump refused to say he'll accept their election results. I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. That was a disastrous answer. Yeah, it was truly extraordinary. I've never heard anything like that. I think it was a terrible mistake. He decided he wanted to get on the crazy train and take it off the rails. Stunning. Is absolutely stunning. Not a total shocker. You think a guy with his track record of taking no for an answer is going to care about the consent of the electorate? I mean, he's going to move on it like a bitch. And here's how you know Trump crossed a line. If you ever wondered how a TV newsman would say, are you me? Well, Chris Wallace gave it a pretty good shot. But, sir, there is a tradition in this country, in fact, one of the prides of this country, is the peaceful transition of power and that no matter how hard fought a campaign is, that at the end of the campaign, that the loser concedes to the winner. Really, Chris Wallace, tradition? <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> There's not being American presidential traditions the moment Donald Trump stepped onto that escalator. <laughs> you think President Trump's gonna pardon a turkey on Thanksgiving? <laughs> He's gonna stop it, frisk it, waterboard its wife and children, and then feed its carcass to Secretary of Labor Scott Baio. <laughs> now, while some campaign traditions and some new ones spring up, and a new tradition this year is that after Donald Trump says something crazy and regrettable, all the people who work for him go on TV and pretend like it didn't happen. Donald Trump will accept the results of the election because he's going to win the election, so they'll be easy to accept. The thing of it is, is he didn't say that he wouldn't accept the outcome. He said, I will let you know at the time. I think he'll accept the results of the election. We just have to make sure that our elections are run properly. Whatever the outcome is, he'll accept, he'll accept that outcome. That's totally not what Trump said. He didn't say he will accept it. He said, we'll see. We'll see is the opposite of saying yes. If someone proposes to you and you say, we'll see, <laughs> none of your friends are gonna say, oh my God, Tiffany's engaged. <laughs> if anything, they say, I think Jordan and Tiffany just broke up. <laughs> I mean, Jason, I mean, Jason and Tiffany just broke up. Jason's the lonely one. <laughs> Luckily, Trump took a day to realize the gravity of his comments. So, this afternoon, he clarified. I will totally accept 
the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Trump is a totally reasonable guy. As long as he gets exactly what he wants 100% of the time. I think we can all relate to that. But refusing to accept the election results is different than anything Trump has done so far. Because in the year that I've been working with Trevor Noah, I've learned a few things about Africa. Like, that it's not a country. <laughs> but here's something else that Trevor told me just today from his deathbed. Hashtag <laughs> penis farts. <laughs> as messed up as the United States is, a lot of places in Africa look to us as an example. Because at least up until now, we haven't done things like this. Kenya continues its descent into chaos following a disputed presidential election there. The opposition party claims the incumbent president stole the election. Violence erupted in Ivory Coast when incumbent Laurent Gbagbo refused to cede power to Alassane Ouattara after a disputed presidential election. Come on, America. It's not enough that you take our music and our blood diamonds. Now you want our violent political transitions, too? Africa jokes. <laughs> Sometimes they get written in advance and it's too late to change it. <laughs> and it's not, it's not only in Africa. I mean, if you want to see how disputed election results can really tear a nation apart, don't forget this shocking footage. After accepting the award for best female video, Taylor Swift was interrupted by rapper Kanye West, who objected to her victory. Yo, Taylor. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. That feud is still going on. Even orange juice and toothpaste are like, guys, learn to live together. Hey there, thanks for subscribing to our new YouTube channel. Uh, you're probably thinking, but I didn't. I know, which is fine, but now you're thinking about subscribing. You should really just subscribe. Subscribe. Who said that? Subscribe. Who's saying these things? Subscribe now. What?